expression. And I think it's an interesting question here that what I've just done here is a paired sample t-test, basically doing the same type of analysis where alpha is the difference between the means here, which we know is 10.6, uh, and that's statistically significant. And beta in the CAPM model is testing whether the variability associated with the performance is lesser or more. And this Morgan, Pittman Morgan test is also testing the variability associated with the two. And I think what's interesting here is, is to find out whether there really is a, a difference between the two. And, and one difference that definitely comes to mind is that Alpha in the traditional CAPM model is the intercept in a linear regression. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to have to go watch that YouTube video where I've, I've done the CAPM analysis. And I noted that the alpha was something like 14 or 16, whereas in this case, the mean is actually 10.6. And the reason that is the case, why there's a difference here, is because alpha is actually testing something I suspect is different than what people think it is. Alpha is testing the difference between the means associated with two investment portfolios when one of the investment portfolios is returning zero. And in the case where you regress Warren Buffett's performance onto the S&P, uh, the the alpha or the intercept is Warren Buffett's investment performance when the S&P 500 yields a zero performance for that year. And what happens is that when the, when the S&P 500 does poorly, Warren Buffett does much better than you would predict based on just an average year from the S&P 500. Um, so there's some linkages here, I think, between alpha and beta, but they're not totally equivalent. And in my opinion, alpha is, uh, is not really as interesting as just testing the mean differences directly. Why not just test them directly with a paired samples t-test? Uh, and if you want to know what Warren Buffett's perf outer performance is when the S&P uh, yields a zero performance for that year, well then you should calculate alpha within the traditional CAPM model. But that's a very bizarre question in my mind. Why would you want to know how well Warren Buffett performs when the S&P yields zero? Uh, don't we want to know what Warren Buffett performs on average in comparison to what the S&P performs on average? I thought that would be more, be more relevant to people's um, modeling and hypothesis testing. The last thing I'm going to note is the p-value here of p less than point z p equal point zero 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 one seven is based on standard uh, normal uh, asymptotic distribution theory testing, and the one of the assumptions associated with that is that we have random sampling and that we have homogeneity of variance and that we have normal distributions, and I didn't test normal distributions here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, recommend, I wouldn't actually even try to force these type of data into a normal sample asymptotic distribution theory approach to hypothesis testing. I did this purely as an example. Instead, we have alternatives to p-value testing, such as randomization tests. And randomization tests, which provide p-values associated with our analyses, do not assume homogeneity of variance. Don't they do not assume normal distributions, and they don't assume random sampling. Uh, they're they're t providing um, p-values based on uh, that answer slightly different questions than uh, the normal distribution theory, but arguably uh, very relevant uh, tests and I'm going to recommend that you look at that analysis where I did a randomization test with a stats package called NCSS 2007 and unfortunately SPSS doesn't do randomization testing uh, at least not for st st um, tests like this one. It does some Monte Carlo uh, simulations within non-parametric analyses, uh, but unfortunately it doesn't do the randomization tests. Um, I guess the last thing I'm going to mention here, I know this is a long-winded one on for just a simple paired sample t-test, but there's a lot of interesting things here, is calculating an effect size for this analysis. We've 
uh, done a lot of things here, but what we haven't done is calculate an effect size. Uh, and traditionally, in comparing two means, at least in the behavioral sciences, people calculate an effect size between two means by subtracting one mean from the other and then dividing that by the standard deviation or the pooled standard deviation, which gives you a Cohen's D. And a Cohen's D is a value that equals the standard deviation difference between the means. So in this case, it's 10.6. And because the standard deviations here are pretty different, I actually think it's more appropriate to use the S&P standard deviation. So what I did to calculate Cohen's D is I simply took 10.60, and I divided that by 17.71. And that gives me a value of 0 0.60, a Cohen's D of 0 0.60. So that means that on average, Warren Buffett's investment performance is 60% of an S&P 500 standard deviation better. And that's a metric that we can use to compare a whole host of closed-ended funds or mutual funds or anyone's investment performance or an individual stock. It's a common metric upon which to calculate, upon which to evaluate a, the difference between investment performances on a standardized metric. And people in the behavioral sciences have been doing this for years. Uh, but in finance, I haven't seen it done before. I'd love someone to send me a reference where someone is doing that. Anyway, this ended up being a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and hope people have some answers to some of the questions I've asked here or comments. Thanks.